Hey everybody, looks like uh, we are live. Just uh, left uh, Rob and uh, Ian's stream on uh, Rob's channel. Oops, hold on a second. Let me get the uh, um, right screen up so people can see what I'm doing. All right, there we go. And let's see, make it a little better there. Alrighty, so we are starting on move 10. It'll be 1 and 3 and 1 on the right, and 1 and 3 and 1 on the left. And I won't keep bringing this up until we start getting a little further down into the uh, pattern, since it's going to be kind of repetitive. Um, Ian is on Rob's stream. I have sent him an invite, and I got a response back that uh, led me to think that he might be able to make it, but I'm not guaranteeing it. Uh, if he's on, it'll be wonderful. If not, we'll still have a wonderful stream. All right, so we are good and ready to go. Okay. So one and three and one on the right. There's one. And three. Oops. Forgot to switch back to the normal view. All right, so let's do that real quick. There we go. Let's see, are we in focus? Looks pretty good. Well, hey, welcome T Rox. Uh, don't recognize the name, but welcome, welcome. And you only missed the start by about a minute, so I'm just starting right now. Uh, but uh, let's see. And three here. And another one lost its, uh, the knot came untied. Got to fix that real quick. Got to figure I need to tie an extra layer on the knot for the next braid so that I don't have the same problem again. I did it on the last one, so I'm not sure what the issue is with this one, but... Fortunately, it's a very quick repair. Get that. And get the knot tied here. And let's see. Yep, that's nice and even tension. Tie this off one or two more times. Probably one more should be fine for this, but I'm tired of these falling off. And there we go. Let's get a knot, like I said, knot back on this thing, and we'll be ready to do it. Oh, no worries. Uh, welcome back. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, for their uh, the member stream that... Uh, uh, Rob has. Um, yeah, I, I saw it was coming up and it's like, oh no, uh, am I going to be conflicting with Ian? And then, uh, let's see. Okay, so. All right, so exchange these here. Um, but Rob's uh, member streams tend to run like about an hour or hour and a half, and I'm going to be on for two, maybe three hours. So. Hopefully we won't have any, we'll have a chance to come on. All right, so one from the top, and then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. But yeah, some of the things I'm hoping to talk about are fun, uh, well, not necessarily fun, but interesting uh, things about Pennsylvania firearms law, arts, um, Leatherworking, woodworking, metalworking, fun stuff. Hey, Gwenwin, nice to see you on tonight. Um, so one and three and one on the left. But yeah, between this tonight's stream and a stream I'm going to do Saturday, this braid will be done. So I don't care how long I have to stream on Saturday, it will be done. 
and one from the top, and the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I have my headphones on, so if uh, Ian does come in, I will hopefully be able to hear it so he's not stuck in the back room for a while. And hopefully I will not boomer this, because I'm afraid I will, because I'm not all that familiar with StreamYard yet. Finally got hit with my first full month of StreamYard pay. That was like uh, 50 bucks. Okay, I will, I will try and remember to do so. Alrighty, so we are moving, that was move 10, and uh, just we'll do it real quick this time. Moving on to 11, it's 1 and 3 and 1, and 1 and 3 and 1. There's 1. Yeah, I've got uh, Rob's stream on, on my phone with it muted, just so I can see if they're still on. So, one from the top, and the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. I'm also getting to the point where uh, I have to be careful because I've reached the end of the leaders, so at some point all of the threads are going to be white at the coma. There we go. There's the one. Also, the threads are much thinner because I'm using kite string for the leaders. So one from the top. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That is an impressive amount of time, Gwendolyn. Uh, congratulations on getting it done. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Thank you very much. That definitely improves my night. One of the things that I uh, really enjoy when I'm doing this is to know that people appreciate it and they, uh, uh, they're they enjoying it. All right, we are moving on to move 12. And, oh, since uh, they were discussing um, uh, Damascus Steel on uh, Rob's stream, uh, I got a picture queued up for that. Let's see. Share screen and and out. There we go. These are some Damascus steel seam rippers I made uh, about ten years ago, somewhere in that time frame. Um, I don't have the power hammer anymore, uh, and uh, it was very time intensive. So, but just thought that would be fun. Let's see. All right. There we go. Back to that. And that. And then back to that. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, what I could make in Damascus that would sell well. And I... Uh, 
was talking with some ladies and we came up with the idea that um, uh, seam rippers would be something that uh, people would enjoy. All right, one and three and one. There's one. Hey, Kathleen, nice to see you on. You just missed the uh, Damascus seam rippers, but I think you may have seen that in another on Facebook sometime back. Um, oh, good, you did get to see it. All right, so one from the top and the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And another one done tied. This is really getting annoying. At least it doesn't seem to be the same ones over and over. That would be frustrating. All right. go and let's see yep that's got nice even tension sorry I got a little bit of uh, dust or lint in my eye and it's really annoying I might have to grab a Kleenex to dab it out At least I haven't had any really spicy food today that might have uh, aggravated that. All righty, there we go. And I was cheering up enough that I should be fine. So one from the bottom and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. I made them from um, 1095 steel and L6. Or no, 15N20, not L6. They're similar steels, but 15N20 uh, uh, is a bandsaw blade material. It's nice and flexible, but still retains a relatively decent edge. Um, so that with 1095 tends to produce a nice high contrast, but still easily sharpenable blade. And one from the top, and then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And moving on to move 13. All right, time for a coma slide. Just a second. There we go. Did have to go for the Kleenex. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Runkle has a much higher heat tolerance than I do. 
So let me just make sure I'm on the right move. So that was 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I'm on 13. So 1 and 3 and 1. And one from the top, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. And one and three and one on the left. There's one. And three. Sorry, just catching up on chat. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I've heard about that. Definitely not uh, an experience I want to be around. The uh, bandsaw blade exploding. Okay. Alrighty. So one from the top and then the bottom is two, three, four, Five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we are on to move 14. Have a good evening, T Rocks. Welcome. Uh, thank you for coming back to the stream, and uh, you have a good evening. Let this untangle real quick. Go. Took that long enough. And one from the top, and then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one and three and one on the left. And one from the top, and then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. No problem. Um, I'll definitely try and remember to tell them you said hi. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is the uh, first week that my uh, work is on a four-day a week, four day a week schedule. Oops, jump the pin there. Okay. Um, so tomorrow is actually my day off. 
I'm going to definitely try and enjoy it, get some work done, some fun work done out in the shop. Get the router up and running, start working on Takadize, that type of thing. All right, we are moving on to move 15 out of 90. And one and three and one. And there we go. So one from the top and then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So probably for the Saturday stream, I am going to uh, do um, a video in the stream of how I do the design on here because I'm going to be adding my maker's mark to the uh, end of the uh, braid pattern. Uh, but I'll do that on camera so people can see what that's like. See how easy the design is for this particular program. I know how easy it is to design for this particular program. And I'm currently trying not to think about things so that I don't get too nervous and go to fanboy mode. Hey, Joy, uh, Joe Loy, welcome to the stream. Don't recognize the name, so thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for the compliment. Um, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one of the th ways I deal with my uh, probably undiagnosed uh, ADD is I tend to focus on a couple of things at a time. Okay, so let me show the pattern here real quick. All right, so we are on fi move 15, we're moving to 16, which is the same as 15 was, but uh, um, this shows us the pattern that we're working on. On the right side, I'm going to exchange top and bottom, moving from me as, at the back to the front, count, to counting wise, I'm gonna exchange top and bottom, the first threads and the third threads, and for the weave through motion, instead of doing all on the bottom for the first one and all on the top for the second one, uh, the first position I will be reversed. So I'll be top instead of bottom. And that's shown here by the path of the blue. Uh, this is how the weave goes. So this one here is reversed. And then it's one and three and one on the left. Same thing, I exchange threads one and three, top to bottom. And the first position of the weave through is reversed top and bottom. So yeah, um, definitely need a pattern for this. Um, some of the some of the Takadai patterns that aren't like custom and, and not overly complex, it's only a few moves and it's easy to memorize it. So you don't have to have a pattern. You can actually braid very quickly with that. I'm thinking between this one and the next one for uh, that I'm doing for Rob, I might do a quick um, kind of a standard pattern um, braid for a while. Um, just to show people that for the non-custom work. Uh, this particular pattern is, it's called a pickup braid. And yes, I did the I did the design on it and this program I'm using converts it into the moves I need. So let me quickly, I will move to edit mode so you can see how the design works. Basically, I just draw what I want. I'm limited to, to, two, um, to two colors. Um, the back side is the reverse of the front side. I don't know if you can see it too well, um, but the back side is blue background, white sword. Top side is white background, blue sword. Um, all right, so I'm going to switch back over to play mode where it shows me what I'm doing. All righty, switch back here. So you can see down here it's blue and white. And let me move this back really quick. And you can see it's white and blue on the top. All right, so I'm exchanging on the right, 
positions ones, top and bottom, and three, top and bottom. And then instead of doing all on the bottom, since the one, first position is reversed, I go from the top first, and then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this last one here comes through, passes through to the bottom on the other side. And I do the top, but I start first with the bottom one and then top two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, when I'm counting the shed positions, oops, that's going to fall off. Let me move that out of the way. Um, I'm counting the even number threads. So one is two, two is four, three is six, like that. Pass this on through. And no problem, uh, Jay. Uh, read that make sure my i got bifocals or progressive readers on uh joloy thank you for the for that i'm here to help people learn and enjoy and see if it's something they want to do on their own and gives people some experience and for some people it's just a uh, nice thing to watch uh for relaxation or um, something to have on in the background so one from the top, and bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Nope. And one from the bottom, and top is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we are moving on to move 17 which was the same as 16. Hey, that's what I'm here for, Joloy. Welcome. Uh, you are welcome to enjoy it as much as or as little as you would like. And three. And one from the top. And then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, oh, oh sorry. Um, exchanging one and three on the left, there's one, and three. One is reversed, so one from the top and bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, yes, I've I have made mistakes and I've had to back braid to get back to them. Um, for this particular type pattern, it's actually fairly important. It can leave a, um, if you're not careful, it can, uh, in addition to the initial mistake, correcting it can cause some other issues. So it's better to go back. But if it's like more than about this much, it's probably not worth the actual effort to do it. Um, unless it's like a very obvious one. But yeah, one of the things about learning uh, Kumihimo, either on the Takadai here or the round one, the Maradai, uh, is the ability to go back into your pattern and braid in reverse until you get your mistake and fix it. So, all right, we are moving on to move 18. And it's still the same as 17. Bring it up real quick just so you can see that I'm not joshing you. There we go. And one and three and one. Somewhere around 23 or move 23 or 25, it'll start, the pattern will start changing as the, we get to the cross guard. There we go. And one from the top and the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight.
And one from the bottom, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight from the top. Yes, I'm getting very close to the end. I will be able to finish this one set of swords and get my maker's mark in, and then it will be done. So one and three and one on the left. Um, I'm going to do probably maybe two or three hours tonight. Depends on if Ian is able to make it on and how long he wants to be on. Um, and then Saturday, I will have a stream to finish it off. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I am now two nights of the way through this set of uh, this rendition of the pattern. Alrighty, so we are moving on to move 19, and still the same as 18. And one from the top, or changing top and bottom. And three. Hey, we're up to five people. That's pretty good for a weeknight stream. Let's see how many are on Rumble real quick. Uh, looks like we've got three people watching on Rumble. So we're doing pretty good. Ten to twelve is, I think, the highest I've had online at any one time. So, all right. So one from the top, and then the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, I'm not sure. I have more uh, uh, what I will definitely be uh, continuing to stream. Um, I'm enjoying this quite a bit, uh, and I have people that uh, tell me they enjoy watching it. Um, so I'm going to keep doing this as long as people keep coming and watching. So, not if not this particular pattern, uh, other patterns as we work our way through. So one and three and one on the left. There's one. Three. And one from the top, and the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight from the top. The next custom pattern I'm going to be doing is for. Uh, uh, Rob from Law and Lumber. I'm uh, going to do a robot design for him. All right, moving on to 20. Still no sign of a change, but we're still doing the same move. And congrats, Kathleen. Glad to hear it. Uh, people I know who've uh, uh, had uh, uh, stuff like that done where they've had issues with the teeth and finally gotten proper replacements. Um, it really makes a lot of difference for them, and they enjoy it quite a bit. So my best wishes for you, and they fit wonderfully. All right. And one from the top, and the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there we go. And one, three, and one on the left. One and 
and three. And one from the top and the bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm also going to be uh, sending Ian the uh, um, dice rolling tower that I uh, 3D printed for him. One, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Alrighty, moving on to move 21. Still no sign of the change in the blade. One and three and one, one and three and one. And there's one and three and one from the top and bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one from the bottom, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Hey, Jen, nice to see you on. Welcome, welcome. Ah, I see that uh, Rob's finished his stream, so I might see Ian on soon, hopefully. He uh, said that he might be able to make it on if I understood him right. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And of course, now I've got an adrenaline rush and I am extremely nervous because, hey, I'm fanboying. Fan -boying. But I will keep an eye out, see if he shows up in the back room soon. And one from the top and bottom is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. When Ian's coming, if Ian comes on, I won't be doing the counting when I'm doing this, so... Uh, figure it'd be uh, rude to talk over the guest. Woohoo! Thank you, Jen. Hey, welcome, Camper for Life. Welcome, uh, Scent Bunny. And Julia. Wow, we're getting a whole bunch of people in here. I don't think I'm going to be able to greet everybody directly. I apologize for that. I will do my best. All right, so we are ready for the next move. Do that really quick. Moving on to move 22. Still no sign of the cross guards showing up yet. And it's time for a coma slide. So slide these blocks forward. Hey, I see you, Ian. Hello. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Just in time for a coma slide. All these blocks have to slide forward every so often, or I run out of pins at the back. Yeah. This is the sort of super cool stuff that I just like. I don't know what. Um... I don't know how any of these machines work. Um, just uh, after... Um, great, I'm getting tongue-tied. Um, I'm also trying to, to braid this so that I can keep up with this because I really do want to get this done for you soon. It's been a long time uh, doing it, and I've enjoyed all of it. Um, I'd uh, introduce you to the stream, but I think pretty much everybody here already knows you. Fair so, enough. Um, and uh, you're welcome to be on as long as you'd like. And if you need to duck out, uh, no problem there. I understand that you're uh, generally oh, fairly just, busy. Yeah, juggling a whole bunch of things. But uh, I've got a little bit of time. And I thought I should really should uh, pop in because uh, okay. I think what you're up to is super cool here. And I'm trying to trying to sort of figure it out and learn. Okay. Um, well, in that case, as soon as I get done with this move, I'll bring up the pattern, show you what it is that I'm doing. Um, I also figured that it might be uh, uh, fun for you. I could uh, discuss some of the uh, weird uh, firearms laws in Pennsylvania. 
that that is interesting because weird laws and firearm laws are both things I'm interested in. Yep. Okay. Well, I am done with this move, so I'm going to bring up the uh, um, the pet. Whoops. Let's see. Did I clicked on the wrong thing there? So let me bring. Okay. There we go. Um, so for the way this pattern goes, uh, these numbers here uh, are the when we count forward. Uh, from me to the front of the rating frame. Those are the ones that we exchange top and bottom rails. And the number here is how we change. Normally I just uh, go up and down through the bottom and then up and down through the top. Um, but uh, to get the pattern here, I have to bring them up from the bottom and move them down from the top down to the bottom to get the color change. So if you can see over here on the right, one, the blue kind of is reversed here and white. Yeah. Um, and that's how I do, that lets me know which one of those I do. So for one here, that's just this first one here. Uh, and then the pattern here shows me what it should look like when I've done it. So if I make a mistake, it's it lets me know when I've done that. Yeah, then you can just see it and you're like, uh, I imagine fixing a mistake there is really a, um... Probably a headache. <laughs> yeah, I've had to uh, back braid a couple of times, uh, and it's not fun. But I've also found that if you do it a few times, you get a much better feel for the structure of the braid you're working with, and it makes it easier to spot mistakes in the future. You learn what a mistake looks like and how to uh, how to figure it out as you're doing it, rather than after you're doing it, kind of thing. Yep. Or like, whoops, I just did something wrong here, or it doesn't look right as I'm. Um, moving my hand through the pattern and I can stop before I actually make the mistake. So that's helpful there. And uh, so the uh, first uh, um, fun firearms law that uh, is more is case law rather than actual law. And I should probably put the disclaimer here. I'm not a lawyer. I've only gotten this from discussions with people who are lawyers but any mistake is clearly mine uh, for misunderstanding what they've said. And if you need to know the answer, hire your own lawyer who can actually advise you because don't trust me. That was an excellent disclaimer. And uh, I don't think a lot of uh, lawyers can disclaimer better than that. Um, so there's a, a statute that uh, says with um, that covers uh in Pennsylvania, what they call a license to carry firearms, which is kind of like a concealed carry license, but it's more general than that. But uh, there is a statute that's supposed to cover um, being able to transport in a vehicle um, without one. And it says that uh, any person who has a license from a state outside Pennsylvania um, can transport in their vehicle without it being a crime. Um, mm -hmm. And due to somebody who had a bad case and took it up to the, uh, I believe it was the Commonwealth Court level, which is an, uh, an appellate level, um, managed to get it to where the appellate court said that any person in that statute specifically excludes Pennsylvania residents. So, Wait, so how does those... any person... Are, are Pennsylvania residents not people? Uh, apparently... <laughs> But yeah, they didn't want this guy who uh, was a Pennsylvania resident who had had his license to carry uh, revoked by the his county sheriff, but he had a Utah uh, license or U Utah concealed weapons license. And he was saying that he could carry uh, using that to you know, be able to travel in a vehicle with a firearm. And the, um, the local police didn't like it. And they uh, charged him for a violation of that statute for uh, for a violation for the statute of carrying a vehicle without a proper license. I so mean, he I said, Hey, the statute says I it. can, but the, uh, the Commonwealth court didn't like that. So they said, Oh yeah, it specifically excludes Pennsylvania residents. So, all right. Okay. So I'm moving on to move 23. That, okay. that seems interesting. Um, Put my other ear monitor in so I can hear you a little better. Um, see another uh, 
uh, thing about the uh, Pennsylvania license to carry. Um, out, if you don't have one, the only way you're allowed to carry in a vehicle is if you're going uh, to and from a gun store, to and from a range, or to and from a place of employment that you own. Um, so it's fairly restrictive. But uh, um, the way the, um, and I, I don't think I've, it, there's a specific statute on this, but as the way the case law has gone, gone um, you need it for any conveyance. And they've actually determined that like bicycle and horse qualifies as conveyance. So without that, the only place you can uh, uh, carry a firearm or transport one without going to the range is um, uh, essentially by foot. <laughs> Oops, okay. Sorry, I'm just talking uh, too much. I'm just picturing the people getting pulled over on a horse here going, and they're like, ah, no, you needed a permit. Yep. Well, we actually have a fairly high concentration of Amish and, uh, people here. So there is, uh, in my particular area, there's a fair amount of uh, horse transport going on. Are the Amish big on guns? Actually, yes, they are, hmm. uh, from what I understand. Uh, a friend of mine lives over closer to Lancaster, and he uh, actually his day job for a while has been um, Amish taxi service. Uh, where he transports uh, Amish people to like, you know, um, horse auctions and things like that. Um, so they don't have to worry about like getting the driver's license and dealing with uh, the Pennsylvania uh, government as, as, or they try to deal with the Pennsylvania government as little as possible. Okay. So they're allowed, I, I don't know what the like rules are on all that. Um, but it sounds like they're allowed to, um, allowed to use vehicles so long as somebody else is doing the driving and they don't have to. Uh... So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, also, some of the Mennonite, or at least uh, actually most of the Mennonites that I know in this area can drive their own vehicles. Um, and they're, they're not much different uh, as far as rules for everybody else. There's what they call old order Mennonite, where they can also have cars, but they have to paint the bumpers black. So, you know, no chrome or anything like that. And it just, it's kind of a spectrum. So without knowing which particular congregation they are, it's a little hard to say what the uh, rules are. Um, so I try not to do that. Um, all right, so bringing this up because we're starting to get close to that. Let's see, there we go. The handguard's starting to show up here. So we'll be changing the pattern fairly quickly, but we are on move 24. Just double checking where I am. I, since this is, uh, these blocks have uh, nine pins on them and the uh, pattern is 90 moves, I'm able to have a nice error check built into it. Okay. So, oh, since we were discussing uh, Damascus, or since you were discussing uh, Damascus Steel on Rob's stream earlier, I have a picture that I might like to share real quick. Let me get back to here of some stuff I made earlier, as in like, you know, 10 years ago. Um, bring this okay. Up quick. What? what are we looking at these, here? These are um, Damascus steel seam rippers I made. Oh, nice. Uh, they're uh, 1095 and 15 and 20. So it's a high carbon plain steel and a bandsaw blade steel. So, but it's, I don't have my power hammer anymore. So. Yeah, no. And that's something you definitely would want for, uh, for that particular operation. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I can... Okay. That's a CNC router that I have. See, now I'm just envious. Um, this is actually, um, the nice thing about this system that I've got is it's sold by the part, so you can assemble it yourself um, and you can buy the materials as you need them and gradually build it up. Cool. And some cloisonne enameling I've done. 
This is uh, the on the right is it before it's all fired and on the left after it's fired and uh, or um, you know fire polished and ground and some CNC uh, wood routers uh, some not sure the exact same but wood you know panel designs. Uh, wow. But that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy my router. Yeah, that thing is. Uh... Did that as 3D printed. It's part of a hair piece. Uh, gave one of those to Lady Rackets when uh, she and Nick were out here in Philly a couple weeks ago. That is beautiful. And let's see. Let me bring this up real quick. And I did this on the router out of uh, Phenolic. I love the uh, the mythos look to that. Yep, uh, this is specifically a uh, uh, Cthulhu um, font that I found online somewhere, and uh, it it looks like a you know an old tablet or whatever you'd find. Yeah, no, I mean that would be uh, like an absolutely fantastic uh, prop for a Call of Cthulhu game or something. Now it looks like it's just me at this point. Um, hi, folks. I'm not sure where uh, Torin has uh, gone. I'm guessing there's some internet connection problems. So um, you're stuck with me for a moment. Um, I just totally ever... did that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> I'm like, Hey folks, don't don't abandon things. Sorry about that. Okay, let me get that uh, shared properly again for the. Uh, there we go. So, still on the same pattern. Uh, and one last thing I'll show before I go back to just. Uh, And I managed to screw that up again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just one thing I wanted to show you real quick. This, I think, is uh, about at least 100 to 150 years old. But let's see. What's this? It's is an Indonesian. Knife? Yeah, it's an Indonesian Chris. Oh, nice. It's got, it's got a pattern welded core. Don't know if it's showing up well or not. That's, there we go. That is very cool. But yeah, I've been wanting to see if I can uh, give suggestions to like you and Rob as far as equipment since my day job is as a CNC machinist. Um, oh, nice. And um, uh, I worked at a metal shop for a while uh made actually made stuff for like um flashlight or gun lights for stream light uh we oh nice this place, place i was at did the bodies stream light does uh excellent work yep their uh home office is in eagleville let's see okay that one didn't actually come in um untied it just slipped the knot or slipped the lark's head knot um the way i keep these um so that they don't unroll is it's just a twist loop here and then over here which lets it hang and you can unroll it by rolling it against the way it wants to unroll so it's a nice way to keep things uh where they're supposed to be um the weight where it's supposed to be and you don't have to like untie and retie it all the time you can just roll it as you need it Okay, so I know where I'm at. So one from the top. Okay. I'm also uh, an elected constable here in Pennsylvania, which uh, has been interesting. Um, we're kind of like at the barely law enforcement level these days. Um, we have no um, probable cause arrest powers. We can only arrest um, for on view felonies, uh, breaches of the peace, and if we have a warrant to serve. 
Okay. And uh, my firearms requalification was last Saturday, and for the first time, I got a perfect score on both firearms. So oh, that, nice. That made my week. I also had uh, the tightest groups of the class I was in, which was helpful for my ego, except for the fact that I haven't actually been to the range except for once in the last 10 months. And it's like, I need to be going a lot more often. And uh, would be doing a lot better if I was going. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, you do fall out of practice. Yep. So it's like I was embarrassed. Uh, it's like, okay, yes, I did. Uh, did do well, but I uh, should be doing a lot better. All right, so we're on to 25. It's still the same moves, but we're getting close to the cross guard there. All right, let's make sure I don't mess things up. There we go. I'm just about over the adrenaline rush, <laughs> but I really, I really appreciate you coming on. Oh no, I'm happy to be here. It's uh just been a matter of scheduling oh yeah everything I, is uh i'm always just like i need to be in three places at once and uh life is too crazy yeah since i started streaming semi-regularly it's like i i'm really impressed uh for the people who are able to do it as often as you and rob and nick and uh, it's just it's tough sometimes you got to uh you know, give up on sleep and recreation. <laughs> yeah. Well, as far as sleep goes, I'm actually doing a lot better than I was. Uh, thanks to Nick, I realized that I actually had an issue and went to my doctor. And uh, while they haven't actually diagnosed narcolepsy, I definitely have hypersomnia. So they uh, prescribed ProVisual for me. And I've been finding out that sleep being sleepy and being tired are actually two separate uh feelings so i've been able to deal with the sleepy and now i've got to sleep more to get rid of the tired because it used to be it didn't matter how much i or little i slept i always was tired when i got up so you know why get the extra sleep if you're just losing parts of the day and you feel the same so all righty and still one and three and one on the right, one, three and one. Okay, so the next move, it's gonna to start to change on the left as we start the cross guard. And I've been horrible. I haven't been keeping up with the chat. So I'm sorry about that. Let me quickly see if there's anything I need to respond to. It's right, tough keeping thing. up with the chat and all that. Especially when I've got to like look away at it for most of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's, it's tough, like, uh, doing leatherwork streams and so forth. Um, I've seen some things that are like chat readers. And so I wonder sometimes about doing like a shop stream and having one of those running in my ear, but, okay. but my chat is sometimes too busy for that. So it might work well for, um, uh, like a members only, uh, stream okay let's see i was going to mention something and completely lost the thought but, um trying to think if there was any other firearms related things that were really weird out here um i was thinking of making a list but of course i got distracted when i would sit down to do that Um, so, uh, as far as, um, CNC router, uh, what were you thinking of doing with that or, I mean, part of it is just, you know, I kind of look at that stuff and I'm like, this is a big toy. So I'd probably just start finding projects for it, you know, okay. um, throw wood on it and see what I can make kind of thing. Um, yep. You know, like uh, Rob's idea of, um, you know, Rob was talking about uh, making Catan tiles. And I'm like, I can think of so many board games that might be fun to make pieces for and, you know, improve in that fashion. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, and I mean, the difference between being able to do that on a CNC versus doing it by hand is... Oh, um, world's a difference. Yeah, it's, hey, this is going to take, you know, 20 minutes versus this is going to take a week <laughs> to make one tile. Yeah. Um, that uh, walnut panel I showed uh, is like 10 inches wide and about 18 inches tall. And uh, it took about 24 hours for it to carve uh, using a tapered ball nose bit. So that gives you an idea of the time frames. Uh, stuff like tiles would be a lot simpler to do. Um, most people that I know uh, that are starting out would use something like um, uh, blue painter's tape, um, tape to the bottom of your wood and to the bed of your uh, router and like some super glue in between to hold it in place. But on the higher end, you can have uh, vacuum tables, um, which are not all that expensive um, relative to some of the other equipment. And they're really nice. You can just um, essentially drop your piece in place, turn on the vacuum, and it holds it well enough that you can uh, do the machining. Uh, day job I'm at now we do uh, like four by eight or five by ten sheets of plastic and that's how we hold down most of the work so all right so that's one three and five on here that get it changed yeah we're starting the hand guard here just double checking to make sure that it looks right there we go I just want to make sure I'm not like screwing things up as I'm doing this because <laughs> normally I count it out for the the chat, but I figured it'd be really rude to like, just keep counting uh, while we're talking. Oh, no worries. <laughs> if you got to count, you got to count. Yep. But, um, oh, Probably uh, be fun to mention how I managed to get elected constable. I was uh, at the polling uh, booth and noticed that nobody was running for constable. And I wrote my name in and won with 100% of the vote. Huh. And, As a uh, writing candidate. Yep. Uh, I It's a six-year term. I got reelected about two years ago with a uh, pretty uh, good percentage of the vote. Um the uh one of my duties is guarding the polling place so i get a chance to talk to talk to a lot of the uh, local uh, um, uh, people from both uh, major parties here and uh, i think it's probably a tribute to uh, my doing the essentially nonpartisan job correctly when the uh, other political party didn't realize what party i was until they realized i wasn't on their ballot <laughs> primary that's uh that's a good place to be. Yep. Uh, part of the reason uh, I've kept the job is because I, part of what I do is like evictions. Um, and I figured that if somebody isn't willing to do the job as um, ethically and as, um, I guess you'd say, as kindly as you can, uh, then somebody else is going to do it and they're not going to do as good of a job. So um, that's one of the main reasons I keep going with it, even though, like you would imagine, doing evictions is not a fun part of the job. Yeah, no, uh, I imagine a lot of crying people, a lot of angry people. Um, yep. I think the, uh, the worst time I had it, and I have not had horrible evictions relative to other consoles I know, was uh, one like a... An eight-year-old was telling me, uh, "Don't, uh, don't take away my mommy." And it's like, in no way am I going to do anything where that's even a remote possibility. But you can't really explain it at the time that is going on. So you just try and do what you can to de-escalate and defuse. Yeah, you're like, I'm not here to arrest anybody, just to throw you out of your house. Um, that's not really a great conversation either. <laughs> No, they were actually able to stay there. They were able to uh, uh, get a payment in that the landlord or the apartment complex was willing to accept. Oh, so, nice! 
And I was trying to essentially get him across to that, that the, the if they could make a payment, the landlord was happy for them to stay. So it wasn't an actual, uh, what, what we call a straight possession. So Yeah, it's like a pay up now, please, so that we don't have to we don't have to eat you. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've found that um, not being uh, a major jerk has um, made things uh, less stressful for people. And I try and make oh. sure that everybody's got the actual information they need as opposed to, um, as I've been told, when the sheriff's uh, department does evictions here, they basically just show up and say, get out. So, but I, yeah, also I mean, like being nice to people can have huge of, you know, yeah. Yep. But uh, um, I'm forgetting what I was going to say there, but um, yeah, we've I've actually uh, um, done what I can if it's, you know, if there's just like a misunderstanding or um something along those lines i do the best i can to try and resolve that to where it doesn't become a uh, major problem oh now i remember what i was going to say um constables we don't really have a department it's all just us uh we're fee for service um and uh we have a a, a state training program but that's pretty much all that it, uh, is we go through the training and then we're on our own and we deal with the local courts as to what they give us to work and uh, how we do it and how we get paid. That's one, two, three. Well, that's um, interesting at any rate. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I managed to move some the wrong way. All right. So, I might have to actually back right here. All right, so. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to probably be a little quiet while I get this back where it was. Yeah, I missed something along here. All right. So. Ah, that's what I need to do. So, yeah, um, this is the fun part of this particular procedure. Was that just um, sort of like a wooden paddle kind of thing? Yeah, um, it's technically called a sword but uh um, not sharp edged i take it no it's uh you don't want it to cut so it's got like about a one millimeter flat al along all the edge so and uh just use it to hold the shed open and uh um, pass things uh and beat it once uh it, the pattern's been set so that it's a nice even tension Um, is, is there a special name for the loom that you're using? Yeah, it's called a Takadai. Um, and, uh, it translates out to high stand. Um, the other braiding frame for Kumihimo is a Marodai and it translates out to round stand. And the way okay. I am reasonably sure that's a fairly accurate translation is in Star Trek, the, uh, Kobayashi Maru, uh, supposedly means, uh, round trip or safe round trip or something along those lines so round for maru makes sense and i've got a maru die over here real quick let me bring that on the camera so you can see okay and it uses cool. it uses the same weights um and this is uh little spool right shaped weights there yep. oh yeah so that makes you know unsurprisingly i guess around uh uh around braid that one's actually rectangular 
but yeah, they um, most of the braids you do with that tend to be round. Okay. All right, so back this up one step here with a. All right. So we are supposed to be two blue on the top. And so this is software that helps you out with this? Yeah. Um, the uh, traditional way to do this is you uh, would design it out on grid paper and uh, um, uh, let's see. Um, and then you'd uh, use like a, a, a V guide and figure out which uh, square was which color. And uh, then you would use a library essentially to let you know what moves to mark down for it. Um, I've got, uh, before I found this, I, and I just lost it. When I found that uh, apparently I didn't tie them all that well, uh, and some of these falling off when you get to the end. But this is what the uh, pattern kind of looks like, um, where you would like use a V here, and then you'd figure out what the moves would have to be. Uh, so, but that gets kind of awkward. So I've really been uh, glad I've been able to use this program. Let's see which one came loose. All right. Um, all right. So router. Um, I like the open build system. You can do different sizes of routers and uh, they have a pretty good uh, forum at openbuilds.com. So you can kind of see what's available. They sell kits for that. Um, and when I was researching the lasers uh, for you, as far as the laser cutters, I was a bit surprised to see that uh, uh, cutting for leather, you need a much uh, different Leather's you... Leather's a tough material for cutting. Yeah. Um, it tends to form like a char and um, if you don't cut at very high temperatures it'll spread this burn through it and ruin more than it cuts yep so, so i sorry i misled you on that when i was first going hey i oh. i know lasers that can cut through a lot of stuff and then i did some research and it's like yeah it's not going to work for leather uh, for most of it yeah, no, it's um, it's a tough material uh, just because of that. It's like, well, um, it's, um, yeah, you need very high power for to get leather clean cuts. Um, apparently, you can do it okay if you've got lower power and you do like a number of paths. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. All right, this will be probably easier to just slide this one back through. Right, so yeah, the, I'm not gonna try and uh, open the weave. I'm just gonna pull this one back out here since I didn't have the cross guard forming and my uh, pattern suddenly wasn't matching up. Almost there. Get this one done, and I'll be able to be back on track. But uh, the silk I use, I ordered from a uh, uh, silk supplier in Japan. The uh, spools run about thirty dollars each for about two thousand meters, which isn't uh, horribly expensive. And then I warp them up. Um, on uh, uh, on the, the bobbins here, and uh, I do about 12 strands per bobbin, which makes it uh, a reasonable size uh, thread where it looks like a, not really yarn, but it's a nice weave pattern when it's done.
Almost there. One of the uh, downsides of the custom pattern uh, where you have to exchange from the top and bottom, um, you have to have them a bit longer than you normally would um, let them hang. So they tend to wrap around each other a bit more than you would like so that they're hard to untangle if they wrap around each other. It takes a little bit of uh, experience untangling them. Sometimes I just let the pull of gravity pull them apart if you are careful. Another thing this has taught me is, is that knots aren't necessarily knots unless you've pulled them tight. So if you're trying to unknot <laughs> something, uh, taking it nice and gentle tends to be much better for unknotting. And just got to... Get these to untangle in the right order, and I'm good to go. Sorry for the distraction level. There we go. And this should be able to braid correctly now. All right, so when the first shed is reversed, so I start from the top, then I go to the bottom for two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Hopefully, we will see the start of the cross guard showing up here. Yep, there it is, right there. Now I can go back on to move 28. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, I, I didn't realize I was still in the small mode. Oh, all good. <laughs> um. I was also going to, uh, when I send this, I'm going to send you that um, uh, slightly larger than normal, uh, but not ridiculously sized um, 3D uh, printed uh, dice rolling tower that I uh, did. It's um, castle design. Um, so I think it'll work well for most of your dice, but not that really big one. Oh, I mean, that really big one is... Um... I don't think that it's designed for <laughs> it's really intended to be an ornament rather than uh, a useful item, I think. Yep. Ready. Let's see. One's not. I think I can just fix that one like that. Part of the unbraiding process, I uh, twisted one, I think, the wrong way. All right, there we go. That looks better. Oh, wow. Um, so Canada is uh, potentially into dark days. The uh, Liberal Party now has a... Um, somebody just sent me a thing. Their uh, 2023 proposed policy resolutions include something to restrict all information. Uh, uh, it says... Ex request the government explore options to hold online information services accountable for the veracity of material published on their platforms and to limit publication only to material whose sources can be traced. That sucks. That's a tremendous violation of free speech. Yeah. 
I, I, I don't know what to say. I've been paying attention to the stuff you've been doing about C11 and C21, and it's just just makes me sad when I hear about them. Oh, you and me both. <laughs> Okay, this is looking correct now. I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, in maybe an election or so that you get a, a strong bounce back against uh, what's been going on and things improve. You'd... Um... What is it? Um, you'd think, but um, yeah, I remember uh, uh, when uh, the um, let's see was it a uh, registry for um, spent casings that you guys had in Canada that uh, was wasn't actually used in solving any crimes if i understand it right that finally got reversed and that was no longer oh, well, we had a red long gun registry that uh solved nothing okay. that was it the uh so yeah it um it solved zero crimes and cost like billions with a b dollars it's yeah one step forward two steps back yeah well the uh We'll see what they try to implement now, but uh, yeah. Um, this is what I think a really useful thing about these streams is, is uh, Alexa Faye in the chat saying, now I know why the hand-woven sageos I wanted for my uh, Aito cost so much. I'm probably mispronouncing yeah. that, but... Uh, um, yeah, it's... Um people do use this uh, with a different frame for making cigales, um that I'm aware of. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, admittedly for me, it's relaxing work, but uh, uh, I remember I Nick's mean, response when I told him it was going to be like 60 hours to make this, make the braid for him. <laughs> I was probably like, what the hell? Don't, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um uh... It's hard to explain to people sometimes where it's like, I put this much work into something and they're like, you what now? Um, yeah, um, same well, thing with leather work. You know, you tell somebody, hey, I made a, um, um, you know, they're like, oh, well, will you make me a wallet? Like, okay, um, here's what it's going to cost. They're like, whoa, I can get a wallet at Walmart for 20 bucks. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I uh, had to... Uh, when I started braiding and uh, I got a bunch of people saying, you know, can you make this for me? Um, I had to start telling them that, no, I can't make it for you because I can't, uh, you won't be able to pay what it's going to cost, but I can teach you how to do it. And then they're like, no, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I've, uh, I mean, I've told people, I said, uh, one guy was asking me for something and I said, what do you think uh, a fair, um, you know, a fair rate of pay for me is for this. He's like, I don't know, uh, 20 bucks an hour. I'm like, cool. Um, here's the estimate on what this will cost. Um, that doesn't include materials. So yeah, yeah, they, um, and sure enough, they were like, I I'm not interested. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things that uh, got me streaming is is that I want to be able to do this, but I couldn't really justify it myself just um, braiding uh, for so long if I was just going to keep it for my own collection. And I figured that uh, I could use it essentially as uh, an advertising thing where I uh, uh, make these for other YouTubers. I stream the process and I you know send it to them as a donation. And it's, it's justifiable to me as advertising. Um, so... Well, hopefully kinda... some, hopefully some people have picked up and subscribed because uh, it is awesome. Thank you. Uh, well, this is the biggest stream I've ever had at like about thirty. It's about three times as much as I normally do. Let me do a quick check here if I can do this without boomering it again. <laughs> Let's see. 
bring up my studio page. Let's see. Yeah, I've uh, about, uh, got about 10 new subscriptions. So that's pretty, that's about the biggest single jump I've had in a long time. I, um, I know when you're sort of on that early crawl, um, it's, it's a tough run. Um, I mean, I've been lucky enough. I had sort of an initial jump, but mm -hmm. even, you know, the first while, like every subscriber is kind of a big thing. Um, so yeah, now, I don't uh, know what a scale is. I'm seeing, uh, Alexa Faye talking about them. Uh, my understanding is it's, um, a native American, um, uh, weaving thing and i haven't really looked in it too far but i know a lot of people who do the kumi Hemo stuff uh do also do uh or use it for uh, that but uh um, the books i think that i've seen that have it in or talk about andean braids so it might be a um, south american um, art okay so. that is uh that is cool <laughs> I'm a big fan of the fact that there's just so many different types of art out there and types of, um, oh, and it looks like it's Japanese. Um, no, that's okay. it. Um, it's for securing your, uh, the scabbard of your katana to the belt. Okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah, the, the, this particular, uh, style that I'm doing now tends to be used as obi ties on kimonos. That makes sense. I kind of thought that that was because um, they said it was for their Aito. So that was like, uh, that's for I used to do a bit of uh, Kendo. Mm -hmm. um, I was awful at it. <laughs> I didn't last long, but. Um... Let's see, it's time for another coma slide. Let's let this blocks up because I'm running out of pin space. needs to go on the take up reel oh also um on this member stream uh, rob was pointing out some bloodwood this um talk i frame i made myself and uh um most of it is bloodwood um that is uh, super is cool this is ebony this is yellow heart this is pretty much all bloodwood i didn't make these but i uh these are no uh, these are maple, and uh, this cross guard here, or cross beam here is walnut. That is fantastic. Yeah, one of the other reasons why I'm streaming is is that um, the only U.S. manufacturer for these frames has at least a two year backlog that I'm aware of, and so what I wanted to do was to make them available so people didn't have to wait that long when they decided they wanted one uh, before being able to get one. That's a long time to wait if you're thinking, hey, I want to try out a hobby. Yeah. Um, I don't know where else you could try one of those out. Yeah, I uh, uh, about two years ago, I made a batch of five of them for um, uh, a conference. Um, and then uh, I haven't made any sense then other than one for the lady who uh, taught me this art, who was, uh, um, she had... Uh, uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. So I wanted to get one made so that she would be able to at least enjoy it for a bit. Um, but I've been kind of trying to tweak my um, router to make it easier. And I just haven't gotten back to where I'm ready to go into full production again. Okay, so. And Oh, and uh, I just got an alert for uh, wildfires. Ooh. Uh, it's not for my immediate area, so I feel um, it's unfortunate for the people who uh, who are in that area, but um, thankfully that's not me. Yeah. Um, it is a, a useful reminder that it's, um, it's a good idea to... Uh, Make sure you've got a, a bag ready to go for uh, 
if you got to move in a hurry. Yep. I uh, need to, speaking of uh, supplies like that, um, it's not exactly related, but I need to get Narcan for my uh, possible kit. I've got a tourniquet um, that I use, uh, or not, not use, but I've got it with it, me since I, uh, we had uh, stop the bleed classes for constables. That's a, that's an ex. I need to take one of those courses. I've got the, uh, the kit myself, mm -hmm. uh, like a little, uh, you know, emergency medical kit, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, uh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about how to do that. And I'd like to, uh, uh, and having the Narcan is always a good thing because um, it's really hard to screw up Narcan. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you give Narcan to somebody who doesn't need it, it just mildly annoys them. Yep. Um, and in my particular area, you can pretty much go to any pharmacy and ask for it. Um, there are also classes you can take, but you're not required to take them to be able to get it. Yeah, where I am, uh, you can go to a pharmacy, and if you don't, um, if you haven't sort of already had like a rundown, they just give you like a, a two minute rundown of how to use mm -hmm. it. Um, now here, the stuff that they give you, the kits are injection as opposed to the nasal spray. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really just like first check if they're breathing, you don't need it. Um, if they're not breathing and you suspect that they're, you know, whatever, then just draw a syringe, you know, stab it into their leg, dump, <laughs> you know, dump quant you know, wait about 15 seconds and see if they're waking up. If not, draw the next syringe and you got up to three. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, they'll, you can get them both as, um, uh, syringe or nasal here from what I understand. So, yeah. Um, I haven't, um, used mine. I've given one to somebody else who did use it. Um, but, um, I haven't personally, uh, sort of had the need myself yet. Um, but it was still good to be able to hand one off. Yeah. Somebody going, does anyone know where I can get a Narcan kit? I'm like, you know, you got an emergency. Yeah, here you go. Thanks. <laughs> it takes off running. And I'm like, ah, I hope this works out. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at this and I definitely did not get it fixed. So I'm going to back braid for a little bit, but uh, shouldn't take too long. Um, since I got a better idea of how far I need to go back and how to get there. And one just went fly. <laughs> like I said, some, some of the knots here apparently did not uh, hold up well. Get that before it runs too far. Uh, and at least it's not hard to fix it when that happens. Um, one of the things that I eventually want to hopefully talk to Rob a little bit more about is 3D printers. Um, I've had a moderate amount of experience with them and I've been enjoying doing it. And since Rob's been expressing an interest, trying to make sure he doesn't get down the wrong rabbit hole. Because um, when I started out, I got one of the uh, Crealities, which are the ones that the local micro centers will offer for $100. And while they do work, they're about four or five generations back from current. And by the time you spend enough money to get them to work the way you would like them like to, you'd be better off just getting a, a better model and starting from there. Yeah. And... Um... I'm just still like yearn for a good leather or a leather laser cutter, but um, uh, sadly, the places that make ones that are sort of rated for leather, um, like for more for actually cutting leather as opposed to like engraving or you know whatever else, um, yeah. are sites that are like, um, please ask us for um, you know for a quote as opposed to here's our price. 
Yeah, from what I from what I could tell uh, when I was doing the research, um, most CO two lasers will work as long as you've got a uh, high enough um, travel speed on them. So, mm. um, I'd say if, as long as you're in like the um, uh, like a forty to sixty watt range uh, for CO two laser and something on the order of, I think it was like um, 1,500 millimeters a minute uh, travel speed, um, you should be able to do most of what you want to do with uh, leather for cutting as well as engraving. Yeah, I know the Laser Pecker 4 advertises that it can cut a surprising thickness of leather, but I just don't know if I believe them. Um Now I'm just trying to see if they list their travel speed on it. Yeah, um, 1,500 millimeters uh, a minute is not ridiculously fast um, for a uh, laser cutter. Um, it's it's a really good, uh, it's, you can do faster with 3D printers really easily uh, for the same transit mechanism. Uh, for routers, that's uh, ridiculously fast because you have a lot of uh, uh, resistance and torque when you cut with them. Yeah. I see that the laser pecker says 2,000 uh, millimeters per second. Um, now, that's in part because they have a, a much lesser working distance or working area. Mm -hmm. um, because they, um, they don't actually move like the laser head. They, uh, they just angle it, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's it's tempting. It's just it's a lot of money if you buy something and it turns out not to be what you wanted. Yes, I, I d understand that. I've I've been lucky in that um, my usual philosophy is is that I buy the best tool I can for the uh, what I want to do, and uh, I usually am not disappointed with that. But again, it's. Do you have the budget for it? And do you have the use for it? So most of the times I've done that, I've actually had a use scenario before I buy it. Yeah, that's the thing is uh, everything I want to do, I can do with other stuff. But um, I'm going to try using my Cricut because it apparently can do thin leather and mm -hmm. cut that. So I'm going to try that and just see if I can um, like try cutting the stuff for um, for a wallet. Okay. Yeah, uh, Cricut's a drag knife system, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's like a very primitive CNC that just pulls a knife along. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, and yet another one drops off. Uh, I got one of those for my uh, sister as a uh, Christmas gift once they uh, when they first started coming out. And it was a bit more than we were expecting because uh, when my wife pointed out to me, it was the first monthly payment was what she thought it was and then uh, decided to do it. And it's like, oh, well, we're going to stick with another four of those payments. But uh, it worked out OK. And my sister wound up using it a lot. At least it's only four. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's a, uh, uh, a semi-professional photographer, so she wound up using it a lot for, uh, you know, making um, presentation, um, you know, framing photos and stuff like that and uh, doing oh, that. Oh, yeah. Things. Yeah, I suppose it would be just absolutely fantastic for, like, making a mat. Because mm -hmm. um, you could just be like, okay, here's the dimensions of what I need the mat to, to be, and then just, um, yep. So, um. Yeah, the, uh, the way my mind just did another jump, but uh, the uh, cloisonne enameling I showed, a um, friend of mine uh, taught me how to do that. Um, and she spent like a semester or two working as a TA for um, a professor who was teaching the class, uh, a, a, an art class that covered that. And uh, she said I was uh, her favorite student because uh, whenever she uh, told me how to do something, I did it the way she told me to do it and didn't go, well, I want to do it this way, which is what she would usually have with the students in the class. And 
uh, her usual response to them was, well, you can do it that way, but you're not going to like the results. <laughs> so, and as a side note of that, um, my wife also occasionally helps out when we make enamels uh, with my uh, the, the lady who taught me um, the enameling. And we got into a discussion of art. And uh, my uh, teacher said to my wife, you know, why are you doing it exactly the way we said it and not like, you know, suggesting anything? Were you raised by Germans? And she said, yes. Uh, <laughs> and we has a lot of German heritage. So uh, when she was growing up, it was a lot of you will do it this way. So that's what she's used to. But she's she does a lot of cooking and she's very creative there. So which is one of the reasons why I'm working on losing weight rather than actively losing weight. Yeah, that's um, that's a challenge. <laughs> I'm getting there eventually. Oh, I forgot I was planning on recording a video today, but. Uh, OK, was it? Uh, that can be a little later. Yeah. And anytime you need to cut out, please feel free. I, I've appreciate the fact that you were able to come on at all. And. Uh, oh, I've been wanting to me. just it's just been a tough. Uh, tough time frame for that. Yeah, so. I know you uh, from watching your streams, you've been traveling and uh, that makes it more difficult. And then all the news lately seems to be depressing. Oh. It's, um, it's been something for sure. But uh, yeah, I was just at the CSSA um, conference, uh, Canadian Shooting Sports Association. Mm -hmm. um, not to be uh, confused with the CSAAA, which is a very different organization. And right now there's some politics. Um, but um, yeah, I'm hoping they've said, uh, so I did a talk there. They recorded it. They're going to put that uh, CSSA talk up on the, um, up on their web uh, webpage. Mm -hmm. But they've said that uh, they've got no problem with me uh, clipping out my portion of the talk because it was me and Ed Burlew. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, the last time I was in Canada was about... 92 or so um i'd uh i was blacksmithing a lot at the time and uh I had the chance to buy a canadian giant hammer which is uh same pattern as the little giant um, i think the uh company name was actually jardine um, that was fun driving up there with a van and an open trailer and then strapping a uh like half a ton of power hammer uh, on that and driving it back down. I can imagine that would be. Um, <laughs> I imagine that would also be fun at the uh, the border there. Um, I don't remember exactly the procedure I went through, but uh, when I uh, was coming on the way back in, uh, uh, didn't have uh, much of an issue. I think the um, when I was going up through, I was talking to them and the impression I got was as long as I was spending money in Canada and not working, they were happy with me. Yes. On the Canadian side, uh, usually on the U S side, they're less happy about, uh, yeah. Uh, I think the fact that like the total price for it being under a thousand dollars, they were like, it's not worth 
I don't know if it was not worth it or it was within the exemption levels, but I was young and uh, more um, adventurous than knowledgeable at that point in time. But uh, when we were talking about um, hourly rates for doing um, uh, artistic work like this, I for these braids, I tend to uh, go with a $30 an hour rate for valuation, which given inflation and whatnot. Uh, it's probably a low price. Yeah. It's close to... Uh, what my day job goes for or uh, pays me, but um, it's, I figure it's a good valuation for what my time is worth as far as general, if not necessarily this uh, specific. But still, that makes these braids, you know, in the several thousand dollar range. Yep. And um, not a lot of people who want to spend that. Yeah. Uh, most of the people I know who do these, it's like, uh, you know, if somebody's willing to, um, buy it and they know what it costs, it's, uh, always a cause for celebration, a chance to be able to, you know, do the art and, uh, you know, get the value for it. There we go. That was more. Well, and, um, you definitely also want to make sure that they paid in advance. Yeah. Yeah, that uh that's always fun. It's or not fun. Uh I tend to say fun because the the usual second half of that uh phrase is, you know, it's fun, kind of like the Spanish Inquisition was fun. Yeah. And is um it? like I've told people, if, you know, when they're like, "Hey, can you I really really want something of your leather work, but I want it like customized." Um, the first thing I always tell them is anything customized that is um, anything where you're customizing it, uh, I need at least half an advance. Yeah. Um, anything where you're customizing it and personalizing it, like in the sense of this is something specific to you, um, is 100% in advance. People are like, why? I'm like, because I really can't sell something that says Bob Jones to anyone else. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely understand that. But uh, it's just too much hassle, ultimately. Yeah. I I have a lot of respect for anybody who's able to uh, make a living at uh, doing that with all the, the people who are used to, hey, it's a mass-produced uh, thing, so it should only be this much. It's like, yeah, you if you want it that much, you can get the mass-produced version. Uh no, no, but I want yours. Well, tough shit. Yeah. Like, I've already told you what mine costs. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm also having fun with Mid Journey in the background. Okay. Yeah, I've been uh, watching the, the stuff you do on Mid Journey on your Discord. Uh, it's it's really watching. gotten amazing some of the stuff it can do mm -hmm. um like i just um something for lawyers and dragons basically is what i was up to um so okay um in another community i'm uh involved with uh basically uh larry korea's uh fandom for uh, his stuff one of his uh, moderators uh, does a lot of uh, AI artwork, and he's actually written a uh, book on um, how to uh, to use the different uh, AI art uh, places like Midjourney and I forget the other one as to uh, like you know here's how to kind of get what you want, and then uh, if you're working with another with an artist who's going to use as a uh, as a kind of a guide for what you actually want. If it's, you can't get the AI to get it exactly. Um, but, uh, I, from what I understand, it's getting a lot better and you're able to get a lot closer to what you would like. 
Oh, and I mean, I just spent, I mean, admittedly, I was throwing prompt, you know, multiple prompts at it and telling it to redo things and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I think I spent 15 minutes to just get it to spit out a piece of art that is um, uh, amazing. And um, like, in order to get that made by somebody, it would have cost me a ton of money and a ton of hassle because um, the sad thing is that dealing with artists is often a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like there's artists where I'm just like, I wanted to give you money, but you made it so much of a hassle that it didn't end up happening. And I've had that happen a few times where you're just like, I wanted to give you money. Um, especially you've got a lot of artists who have no sort of business or legal background. Mm -hmm. And so they'll send you a, um, a contract that they found online. Oh, and it'll be like, this doesn't allow for any sort of um, republication. And I'm like, but I literally am wanting to buy this to put in a book. So I need your commercial rate. And they're like, well, this is our, con this is the contract I use. I'm like, no, I need a contract that actually says I can do the things I want to do. And they're like, well, I've never had a problem with this before. I'm like, well, today somebody's read it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... And then they're like, well, it's my contract or no deal. I'm like, well, then it's no deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the things I've been seeing uh, a lot of people uh, complain about is, you know, it's AI artists stealing images. But from what I understand of how it works, Yes, it takes individual elements and combines them in a new form, which is essentially, you know, transformative art. And uh, you have to feed in images because, hey, you have to, uh, uh, that's how you train, you know, human artists. You have to show them things and then have them learn how to imitate it and do their own style and work from there. It's, it, it's just that you've got some silicon in the process uh, doing some of the, the transformations for you. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh. It's uh well, and I mean real artists go through phases where they do things like, you know, repeatedly try to duplicate the great masters or other artists. Um, I know somebody who did an entire class on uh, Geiger. Okay. And it was literally, they would bring in like a Geiger piece and everybody would paint it, that same piece. Like that same, um, you know, same painting, same sculpture, whatever it was. And, you know, then they would just try to duplicate it. And at the end of it, it was like, okay, now we want you to make new stuff, but in that vein, right? Mm hmm so um and um lots of people do that sort of thing it's just part of you know yeah part of just how you uh how you learn okay Yeah, I apparently have gotten this more messed up than I was expecting. <laughs> oh, that's that's no good. Let's see. So I think I figured out why I uh, got my left and right side out of sync. So, in which case. Out why I uh, jumped a pin out of place. All right.
that's uh makes it sound like it's finicky um i uh, got dis the problem was is i got distracted um, ah because the conversation is nice but now that uh i'm going back to here I'm, i am getting back to where i need to be um i just have to make sure that i'm moving you know moving the right ones into the right place And there we go. Found the missing one. Now we're back in order. Double check. Doing some plotting with uh, prototopics. Okay, not familiar with that. Oh, uh, he's the uh, David uh, prototopics runs. Uh, he's the DM for uh, for the Lawyers and Dragons. Okay. Oh, and you've got to check out the. Uh, uh, the post Rob just made. Okay. He's posted about uh, the table he made. Um, and I got to say, it's just amazing. Okay. It's, that's the uh, cork one with the uh, acrylic pour? No, this is a different one entirely. Uh, it's um, it's one he made to honor his, uh, his father. Okay. And it's an acrylic pour in a live uh, with a live edge, but okay. uh, the acrylic is sort of like a purple blue, um, and he put lights in it. Okay. Um, so it's got uh, the constellations. So it's it's um, it's a really impressive. I guess it's not a table. It's like a countertop. Um, okay. Uh, I've seen it in person. It's really impressive. And um, so he's got some discussions about the uh, the building on it. Uh, it is amazing to watch. Um, or it's amazing to see. Uh... Okay. Yeah, I will definitely have to check that out. Also, I don't know if you're looking at the chat, but uh, you just had a, a, a bing. Um, in that you just ticked over uh, 600 subscribers. Ooh. So that is a, that's a good place to be. Thank you for the update, Laura. <laughs> oh, I suppose it's a little fortunate that that one dropped off because it makes it much easier to pull this one through, this, uh, through the frame if I don't have to pull the weight through as well. And uh, Kristen M96 noting it's the sky over where his dad passed away. Okay. So, yeah. One of the, uh, um, when I've uh, talked to uh, people about law, um, the way I've tried to explain it to them, why it, you can't just like look at the statutes and go from that, is that uh, the way I describe it is um, the law is a, written in a language that looks a lot like English, 
but isn't exactly. Um, yep. And uh, in addition to that, you have, um, like in computer programming terms, you have additional libraries of case law that if you're not aware of, uh, modify uh, how that works. Uh, that like what I described earlier with the uh, uh, any person in Pennsylvania specifically excluding Pennsylvania residents, um, which looks like an exact opposite of what the statute said. And then on top of that, um, uh, after all that, as long as uh, you know somebody can uh, make a good argument and uh, like a judge will agree with it, um, you might wind up with something entirely different anyway, regardless of what uh, things say prior to that point. So it's partly uh, like a computer programming language that is not written in English and partly um, debate. It's not exactly the way I described it before, but I'm a little distracted. So apologize if I lost track there. Well, I mean, one example that they use in law school, uh, we looked at a particular statute and it says you shall not uh, keep cattle in the city. And then they define cattle as cows, goats, horses, sheep, uh, chickens, pigs, and any similar, or ducks and any similar animal. Yep. And so, you know, if you, you read that and you say, I can't keep cattle in the city, you might not think that a duck is cattle, but a duck is cattle. Like, according to that statute, because they, that's the definition that they use. Um, so it's, um, people get really surprised by that sort of thing. And your example of, um, uh, your example of like, yeah, person excludes residents is a, is a fantastic one. Right. Uh, and the only way to know that is to have the case law. Yeah. Um, as, as for U.S. firearms, one of the uh, more common uh, things uh, along those lines is the Form 4473 says that, you know, you're prohibited if you've been uh, convicted of uh, a misdemeanor with uh, more than one year potential sentence. But if you look on the back, it specifically said, and in the statute, it also specifically says that uh, um, that uh, the definition also includes state felonies of not more than two years. So, yeah. uh, you know, which one applies? And of course, if you answer uh, incorrectly, you know, you're held accountable for that, whether you knew it or not. I mean, we also had uh, one of the other nasty things that can come up, which was um, uh, with the judge uh, getting it wrong in court. And um, this one was the judge convicted a guy on the basis of um, a particular statute. And that statute had actually been uh, overturned in case law, mm -hmm. but never removed from the books. Yeah. That definitely sucks if you're in that situation. Um, it... I, it really was embarrassing for the judge. Um, Cause I walked out and I was like, they just convicted this guy, but on a statute that no longer exists. And um, people were like, what? And I'm like, yeah, no, this was struck down, but um, they just convicted him on that. Um, and uh, cause I was actually watching that one in court. I was like, this is bad. Um, the worst part is, is that this happened while this uh, this was one of the first televised moments in a trial in Canada. Yeah, I've, I remember you talking about that before. Yeah, it was just um, brutal because <laughs> uh, that probably discouraged judges from uh, doing similar stuff. Okay, I think I've backbraided far enough. Now I just need to make sure I'm uh, lined up correctly for... What I'm doing next, and I should be able to go forward instead of back again.
-hmm. but uh, I figure um, I should definitely be able to get this done uh, Saturday. I'm almost to the break or pretty close to the uh, breakover point for the gap between the swords and I have one more to do. And then I'm going to uh, uh, do the maker's mark, which should only take probably about 15 moves. Uh, so I'll, I'll do like maybe a three out three or four hour stream on Saturday and it'll be done then. And uh, I'll try and get that out in the mail within about uh, a week or so after that. Uh, I want to take some pictures of it uh, before I head out or before I mail it out. Um, Absolutely. I'm I'm not like in a hurry, although I'm like, it's really cool. Um, if you sort of, you know, it's like whenever you, uh, you know, don't you don't need to rush or put other things aside or whatever else. But um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. The, um, let's see. One of the things I've been thinking for the design for Rob's braid is uh, have the little robots uh, in the design be kind of like rotate 90 degrees every iteration. So it looks like they're cartwheeling. I think that kind of fits the uh, the flavor he has going for uh, his channel and whatnot. That is uh, that is pretty cool. <laughs> but I should probably. Um... Yeah, no problem. I, I appreciate should probably get some stuff done. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. And I I think this is really cool. Um, I and thank you for giving us a, a look into how it's made because um, I'm also going to um, my mother in law does some uh, weaving like she does stuff on sort of a, a more traditional loom. Mm -hmm. So um, I will. Uh, What is it? Uh, I'll sort of pass this along because I think she'd think that this is pretty cool too. Thank you. Like. I appreciate that. Because um, um. it's uh, there's lots of different sort of styles of uh, of weaving because that's sort of what this is, right? But uh, the as I understand it, the main difference between the the what I'm doing, which is technically braiding as opposed to weaving is in weaving your warp and your weft never trade places in braiding they do okay and um that's sort of uh, beyond me in terms of how that difference creates a structural difference but um i you know you're saying like the threads that end are on the left end up on the right and then yeah. back and forth um, yeah. whereas in weaving the the left stays the left the right stays the right kind of thing yeah in in weaving these uh, threads would basically be going back and forth along here, and these would always stay this same here, as opposed to what I'm doing is, is I'm uh, doing one across here and then taking another one going back there so that uh, uh, they eventually all trade places. Fair enough. Well, that um, is a uh, an interesting distinction. I'm going to have to think on, like, Maybe I'll do some research as to like weaving versus braiding and the uh, the significance of that because I know weaving was like a major um, um, innovation in the sense of being able to make large amounts of um, large amounts of fabric. Yeah. Um, which in turn was a big thing for uh, like you got textile mills, you got um, you know. People were able to uh, afford clothing in ways that they weren't able to before. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I'll have to check that out because that's um, that's an interesting rabbit hole that I think I'm going to be uh, going down now. So, okay. Well, I'm <laughs> glad I found something that you were interested in. 
Oh, well, I, uh, I appreciate it as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for sharing. And uh, I will uh, slip away and hopefully uh, if you're doing another one of these, hopefully I'll, I'll try to pop on if I can here. Okay. Um, I'll, uh, uh, I don't want to overload your DM. So I'll probably just, uh, when I post on Twitter, uh, I'll tag you in when I start a new one and like maybe about once a month or something like that. So, I mean, don't feel free or don't worry about, uh, you know, shooting me a DM. Um, okay. I can't always respond to them, but, uh, I, I'm never like, you know, why is this person in my DMS? That's not my style. So, okay. <laughs> Understood. <All right. laughs> uh, I just didn't want to be too annoying. <laughs> no. And I mean, if, if you were, I'd let you know, I'm, I'm a big boy. I can be like, Hey, um, you know, chill, but, uh, we're not near that point. So. Okay. Thank you very All much. Right. You have a good evening and, uh, stay safe. Ah, cheers. Have a good evening. Let me quickly catch up with chat to see what I've been missing. Uh, let's see. See if there's anything I need to quickly respond to. I think I might have to uh, take some time off screen uh, and fix the mistake back right a little bit, get back to where I'm ready to. Uh, finish it off. Does anybody have any questions or anything they want me to cover before I end the stream? Glad to help, Tony P. And I forgot to mention the uh, uh, person who was on earlier who wanted me to mention to Runkle. But that's ADD brain for you. I apologize. Yeah, I'm actually um, back to where I've definitely uh, pretty much passed the error. I just have to make sure that uh, when I get the... Uh, uh, the, the color pattern that it's supposed to be top and bottom that I haven't crossed anything over that gives me a knot. I might actually back braid like one or two more steps being very careful that I'm going in the right way now that I no longer have the error in it just to make sure that I start back up where it's supposed to be. Also, uh, Kristen, uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the, the, the fact you've been doing the robots for Rob, that's what gave me the idea to do the uh, robot design on his, uh, um, oops, uh, robot design on uh, for his braid. Welcome back, Kathleen. Sorry, but I'm probably going to go ahead and end this here. I have got some uh, pondering to do on this braid uh, since I want to make sure that the air is definitely out of here. Um, but I will... When I start Saturday, I'll essentially start back up from where I am. And I will continue to uh, be streaming regularly, usually on Tuesday and Thursday nights. And I try and do a weekend stream. And I'll be doing some uh, round Maradai braids as well. Rain Man, not, that's nice to hear. Um, yeah, the machines I'm using at my current job are open frame uh, CNC routers. We have uh, an Anderson Exact, uh, an Orion Limtech, and an Onsrud. Um, we also have several Haas Mills, the V2 models, uh, and a couple of Lays. Uh, so, but yeah, anytime you want to uh, hop on and uh, chat about CNC stuff, I'm happy to do that as well during the, the streams. Uh, let me post that up so people can see what I'm talking about. All righty. So looks like I've uh, caught up with all the uh, stuff. I will go ahead and end the stream now. Thanks to everybody who has uh, uh, subscribed and liked and watched the stream. I appreciate that, and I will try and continue on uh, doing what I've been doing, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it.
Stay safe and happy breeding.